Welcome back to the box office on a weekend where the Northern Hemisphere fought back in some of the games, but the box still unbeaten after beating the old enemy England. It's Wales up next, who's on a record 11 games in a row, which they've lost. Can they turn it around this week? It is the big box who they are up against, and we are rooting for our box team. We are still without Shimmy, he's still overseas, but we are joined by a very special guest star we will see in a couple of minutes because for now, the box office is open. JDV's Legacy Spices. Good to go. You know, you like a beer, but other than that, you said no. I'm alright for now, thank you. Um, I've had plenty guys, of Guys, you know, I will <coughs> do this, um, I, I'll have beer, but not today. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. it's, yeah, it's bright here, boys. The caps are right, huh? Caps are okay. Thank you. This reminds me of those glass. That I mean, there's no chance I'm remembering that after this. Thank you. Welcome back to the box office, where, as usual, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Skulk Berger. But we've got an extremely special guest as well. We love to call him Fanta Pants, <laughs> other calls him the Ginger Ninja, and on TV is also known as Spicy Plum, but for the world of rugby, two-time World Cup champion, Stephen Katsoff. Thanks, Thanks Stevie. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Katsi, welcome. Talk Why, thank you. Stephen, how fresh are you? I know you were tweaking him on the weekend, and um, you launched a beer. Yeah. Your beer. Um, how many units? Uh, per day? <laughs> no, <all> consumed <laughs> or <Average>. sold? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely more consumed than sold, yeah. that I can promise yeah. you. Uh, no, it was a great weekend, yes, but I'm big bros vandaag. Um, yeah, I had my fair share of lagers over the weekend, so feeling a bit, I'm feeling it a bit today. Um, how messy was it? Did you bump into Brian Banner and Shimmy uh, at Inferno's there Saturday night post-game? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no we uh, actually launched at the German club there in, in London. Uh, the Thursday night, and then Saturday went had a couple of beers at uh, London Welsh. Yes, okay. Yeah. So, so you nice launched crew. Bomb Squad beer at a German club, mm -hmm. German <laughs> restaurant in London. In London. And then went to the Welsh. Yeah, the Welsh afterwards. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes um, sense. We're just keeping as, it wide. As we, as we do. <laughs> Scott, and your weekend? You, um, you, yeah, you sound a little bit rough yeah, as well um, this I'm, I'm, I'm getting better, but I was in golf tour, guys. Um, in Plet, uh, played Plet, and then we played Goose Valley. Um, got into my beer drinking rhythm early morning. And uh, John, as you know, like a, there's no real off switch with me. So <clears throat> I am feeling a little bit worse for wears, unless, you know, Kitsi, I think, has got more, more damage than me. I didn't have to you know, sit on a 12-hour flight. It's a quick little hop from George yeah. down. Luckily, I didn't have to do the drive. Um, but yes, I am not my freshest. Can I spoil Loved it? watching rugby though. Eh? Uh, can I spoil it for you? We we won the game on Saturday. <laughs> or, di or did you? I actually did watched, you watch? I watched oh, the I entire like game. <laughs> and I woke up on Sunday morning. I also watched the All Blacks game and I had to go on YouTube to watch the extended highlight. <laughs> 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 do you remember what exactly happened? Now, yeah. <laughs> mentioning nightclubs and our friend Anyani Shimanga's comments and questions last week with Ben Youngs. I would like to rectify I, um, everything that was said. I, I would like to confirm your <laughs> legacy. Yeah. yeah. Your, the JDV is getting pissed so firstly, legacy. Firstly, Skok. Yes. I played two games for Leicester, not <laughs> just one, <laughs> as, as referred to by Lenny. I know, okay? but not a lot, a lot of minutes. You scored a try in I the first I've got 50% try scoring <laughs> yeah. record for Leicester. Yeah. Um, and also, in my defence, okay, I had... So, you know what happened, because I arrived there. My kids are aged one, two and three. Okay, the day we flew. We arrived there, you know, no one. And I had a calf injury because obviously World Cup, yeah, I had an yeah. injury. <laughs> this is not I, after you've broken your jaw I already twice. recovered from <laughs> yeah. my broken jaw. Yeah. I didn't ha have the broken jaw yeah. when I was at Leicester. Um, and, then, and then they said, no, it was coming from my back. So they did like a, um, uh, what do you call it? Your epidural. Uh, epidural. And while they're doing this and the dog goes, oops. Long story short, they nicked the dura, the yeah, thing yeah. Uh, that goes around the spine. I know the spine, that's quite well. And I was leaking spinal fluid. Now, the only person that I know that has ever been through this is Skulk yeah. Berger. Okay, so I phoned Skulk and he was like, that's the worst thing that could ever happen to you. That's like having permanent vertigo. Ask him, he'll, he'll yeah. get up and topple over. Yeah, you, know? you can't, you get up and then you 
vomit from mm. the pain. So bedridden for six weeks. After that, my kids had scarlet fever. Then they had swine flu. Then they had chicken pox. Then they had whatever. So it was like... Okay, is this, <laughs> so, not, is this so, a shopping so, story or so, is there a yeah, legacy? Yeah. Yeah, like no, so the legacy is two goats. <laughs> yeah. But when I arrived at Leicester, yeah. and maybe to Lenny's point, okay, so his, bro his brother Tom, who was club captain at the time, yeah, yeah. he was also injured. So I mean, with the older guys in the group, so he kind of partnered up. But I arrived there. Now, but at this, so I went over for two weeks and then uh, to get everything ready and then I flew back, got the, the mm. wife and the kids and flew over with me. But that first weekend I'm there, so Saturday night, you know, they're in my little village. Um, don't, well, don't know anyone. Here's money to your luggage. Hey, hey bro, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> which which but, by all accounts was also injured during that time. No, he was, um, I think he was recovering, but okay. long story short, he's like, no, come out for beer, myself and my brother Freddie. And Logo V Mulepolo. So I go with these the islanders, course. okay? And it's basically, so I drink a beer, you drink a beer. It's yeah. one for one, right? Now, Logo is like 140 kgs he can Frost, consume. Fr frosty tips. Freddy, yeah. Freddy too, like he's got all the experience and money is not a small guy either. So that was my, that was my intro to Leicester and never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> so some of, some of it was right. Not all of it. Um, <laughs> Kitsi, good to be back here at Bishops for you. Uh, you must have good memories playing here for, for Paul Rose. Uh, not? No, not too great. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. No, unfortunately, lost my uh, standard nine, Anson Matrika. So it was, it was quite tough. No way. So who, who were the guys playing for Bishops then? Uh, Nizam Kaur, Sam Lane was my grade oh, 11. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then Kebble and those boys were Matrika. Okay. Yeah, so not great. What year was that? 2009-2010. Sure. Jeez. Yeah. So. And like I obviously played with Oli, played yeah. against Sam Lane, played, played for Borland. Played with Nemo. Played, played with, with Nemo. <coughs> Nemo yeah. is the only loose forward I've ever come across to in his first year break his nose and have a nose job and then came back and broke it again. <laughs> <laughs> and, then lost his yeah. <laughs> and then lost his front grill and I was like, pal, welcome. Welcome to playing loose forward. That's surprising because, I mean, the last couple of years it's been pretty much one-way traffic in, in, in uh, this fixture. Kitsi, now I don't know why Freddie, our producer, put this in here. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, I must tell you, it must be quite special being part of the most successful school, rugby school in the country with Paul Ruiz, or five ex-Paul Ruiz players that were part of that 2019 uh, Rugby World Cup winning group. Can we get a pause for that? Nah, you can't. Nah, you, you think, you <laughs> think Freddie, Freddie messed up Paul Ruiz and Paul Jim? No, nah, yeah. So they had five, but Paul Jim had players in every single Rugby World Cup winning team. Can you say the same? I'll answer in that. My, yeah. In my two years, yeah? Yeah, in, yeah. Oh, but that's <laughs> God, Let's make it about me. Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Before before we actually get into the into the, the rugby, uh, could see the rugby on the weekend, um, and, and it was a, a massive game. You you were obviously there. Um, a lot of people want to know just about the injury. How's that coming on? You're going in for the op on Wednesday. You on said. Wednesday, yes. Um, I mean, it must be if you were for front row having a neck a neck operation. It must be must be quite quite daunting, but kind of just following the processes now, right? Yeah, basically, it's a bit of a stressful one because it's such a high area in my neck as well, like C1, yeah. uh, C2, which, yeah. is, which is a bit of an issue, but I uh, almost went through this last couple of weeks, uh, just like building up to the operation. So basically now I just want to get it done yeah. and start the rehab process and see what happens after that. But uh, yeah, it was quite a, a fright. It happened in the weirdest way, just a normal scrum every day type of thing. And then just felt something snap at the back. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are you getting a neck fusion? Do you know? Yeah. yeah. You've had one of those. Yeah. Uh, so, so you reluctantly say welcome to the club. Yeah. But I had mine in 2006, boys. It's probably, I've probably got a seven level neck fusion by this stage, but mine was a bit lower, five, six. But it's also, I, I, again, I, I think it shows the, you know, a lot of people get gets irritated by the new laws and, and yeah. some of it, you know, we don't totally agree with. But it shows that the rugby will remain, and we want it to remain, yeah. a contact sport because that is what it is. It's a physical sport. It's a contact sport. But it also shows that um, that there's an element of risk involved, and it can happen so quickly. Here we have a, 
two-time you know, World Cup yeah. winner, front rower, and yeah, it happens like... Yeah, like it doesn't happen like in a freak, freak accident, yeah. most of them. Like, I made mine in a tackle. Yeah. I did mine in a tackle, and some, before I got there, someone else got him. So instead yeah. of hitting with shoulder, hit him with the head, you yeah. in a scrum. Yeah, mine was just a normal scrum. Scrum didn't even collapse. It was just like, in the process of the scrum, yeah. just felt something go. But, yeah, it's, uh, as you said, like, it's, it's still it's such a contact is. sport, and... Yeah. And the Oaks put their bodies on the line every week and it's just getting more and more physical. Yeah. Like with the guys. You don't, you don't have any like neural fallout or numbness or weakness no, nothing. Actually, arms like or... as I'm sitting here, I'm actually feeling like quite pain free, which is yeah, very happy about. But yeah. like the, the so, stability. So you're about to get a neck fusion. I've had one. The only one with referral down his arm was the guy without a neck fusion <laughs> or not a booked surgery yet. <laughs> Yeah. Talk, talk me, talk me through due. this, John. But What's happening? I'm also, yeah. Yeah. I'm also due. I got the news like a couple of weeks ago. But guys, let's <laughs> move to a more positive. <laughs> Is to this podcast going to change well, yeah. like the name to like the fusion or whatever? Yeah. Diffusion. 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 <laughs> okay. Let's, you talk about getting a fright. Did you guys get a fright on the weekend with the start that England had? I mean, again, they, 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 they got the loss, but uh, their tactics were actually pretty good against us. Put us under pressure. Um, you know, for for the 80 minutes of the game, it, it never felt as if we were totally in control. No, we definitely weren't. I think if we got a perfect start, they were in trouble. Um, yep. uh, but I mean, their start to that game was lightning. Was unreal, and obviously Marcus Smith is something special. He's been playing well all all three of these Test matches, Ultimate N uh, Nations Cup, is it called? Um, doubting myself here. This long long Monday already for me. But like, yeah, he was exceptional. And then also, I think their tactics were spot on. And you know, like we, uh, I guess our weakest point on the weekend was the way we defended the mall. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, got Gerrit Stenenkamp mm -hmm. in the bin for one of those. But yeah, we were under pressure for large parts. But, you know, England, the last 20 minutes, they haven't got one over the line yet against the top tier nations. And for us, it was a case of handling the big moments in that game the best. And, you know, Ches and Colby's two tries, I mean. Crazy. How ridiculous. Damien the Islander with a bust. Um, Grant Williams finish. Um, yeah, I think we just had a little bit too much class for English side that is trending. Yeah. But I don't know if, you know, if the English public and media has got a long enough, you know, fuse to let them actually go through this growth part of the process. So, yeah, it was tight, but yeah, it's a great win for the box. Mm. Could see, um, so the box still unbeaten on, on tour, and it's actually crazy to think that it's been 11 years since we had an unbeaten end of year tour. The, um, um, so we're still unbeaten. England, third straight loss in a row at Twickenham, well, Allianz. Yeah. Um, you know, their worst record in 18 years. Do, you, do, do they purely go by, by results, or, or do you feel there, there is actually some improvement from, a, from an English point of view? Yeah, I've just been, like, if you think about the last three weeks, their close loss against New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, they could have easily won that Australian test as well. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely, like, if you look over the last 18 months or two years, there's, for me, there's definitely been an improvement in, in English rugby in general. Um, so, yeah, I think probably for them, it's just trying to tick that one over and get a win. But uh, and, and things might change into the future. But, yeah, I think they, they're in a dark place. Like, yeah. I mean... If I think back of 2016, 2017 with the box, like I was in that same position. Like 100%. You, like, you almost don't know where you're going to get a win and you have to graft that extra hard to, to try and force something out of it and the more you force it, the more mistakes you make. So, yeah, I think England's in that, on yeah, that tipping for, point. For them, like you, you, they can look at that last 20 and, and figure out you know, what is it that's costing them. Because mm -hmm. they created enough opportunities to come back at the box and then somehow... Managed not to score, mm. whether it's Cowan Dickey doing the little dummy throw. Yeah, it told you his neck roll. Neck roll on, on yeah, Malcolm Marks. A game, game uh, couple of turnovers. You, you think of Jesse Creel smashing, uh, was it Lawrence there in the midfield, yeah. getting the turnover off the back of that. So they create opportunities, not going for the three points, kicking it to touch and then you know, getting turned over. Um, so it's just the big moments that they're not handling uh, well enough. I think the one outlier is probably the game, the Australian game. Yeah, that's the one where they'll... Where you think, think you know, they're good enough side to beat Australia, but then Australia goes and plays against Wales and they make a couple of personnel changes and all of a sudden Valentini, Skelton, Karevi is running at the gain line. Mm. They look a different beast. Did I also spot Vincent Koch scrumming at Lucid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, did. I did, hey. He hasn't been there for a while, hey? Oh, but that, 
by that stage of the game, I was about 10 beers in, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you thought he was on the tight yeah, side. I was like, I was a bit confused. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you talk about being in that, in that position and, and England really struggling to get out of, out of this slump. And, yeah, we really, really feel for them and, you know, that they're struggling so much now. Yeah, you know? shame, man. Yeah. Shame. No, we, we do. Um, Especially down this part. Yeah, world, you know, yeah. you gotta, you got to feel for them. Uh, um, well, our producer also sent us some, some yes. cryptic messages early in. <laughs> our producer, Freddie, 15 minutes in. into the game. So we have a group, Shimmy, Skulk, myself, and Freddie. So 15 minutes into the game, Freddie goes, you guys seem shaken. Mm. <laughs> no one replies. <laughs> so at the end of the game, he just messages again. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie's been removed from the group. Yeah, Freddie's been removed yeah. from the group. Um, have you been surprised by the, the fact that we didn't get dominance at, at set phases? Scr uh, Scrum-wise, eventually, I think we did. But a bit of a different different tactic, I would say, um, during this game. And then line-outs. Line-outs not functioning the way, mm. the way it used to. Yeah, I think a couple of skews, uh, skews throws, but like miss, miss jumpers. Um, I think the fact that England actually got more dominance, which which was quite a bit bit of a shock, not a shock, but like I think they that was probably a big focus point for them yeah. in, in trying to assert themselves in the game. Um, but yeah, I think it's something that Don and and Dion will have a look at this week, probably to try and rectify big time against Wales. I think I think also like these last two games, like our breakdown hasn't been exceptional, so yeah. which makes it not hard for our number nine. Even Grant, although he scored that cracker. It comes back with like a scrappy, you know, we give them an opportunity to make it a fight. And it's not clean, it's hard for, obviously, Kubis Ryan has got a bit more experience of playing up there, played for Northampton for large parts of his career. So, you know, he was exceptional when he came on. But like, I think we, our reaction to our breakdown has got to be better. On our line <coughs> I think you could see where the focus was, is to try and get temper. You know, one or two yeah. more time balls against them that man watch the shorter line out. Um, and we've got one or two of them right, but like, yeah, it's, it's unusual for us to battle at something that's mechanical mm -hmm. and a line out for us mechanical. Mall stopping, same thing. You've got to hit your target, split your jumper, whatever, roll the front one out, whether it's contest and sack. You know, we're not quite as sharp um, as we can be, uh, but we got away with it on the weekend. I think Wales got mauled. Um, obviously, they didn't have Tupo. Um, playing for Australia, so the scrum wasn't as effective, but they got mauled and they got bullied on the gain line and the box will look at that and go, yeah. that's, our, that's, our, that's our goal this our opportunity weekend. Opportunity, yeah. And, and Kitsi, the, the scrum, um, so the, the tactic changed a bit this weekend with Ox going off relatively early, yeah. you know, so in a, in a change that wouldn't have been part of the plan. Now, when you guys prepare, because the team gets announced internally quite early in yeah. the week, right? So when you prepare for a test match, would it normally be, let's say, yourself, Malcolm and Vince on the bench and you scrum together basically most of the week? Or do you actually interchange with the, with the starters, you know, uh, for example, yeah, as well? No, he would basically 90% of the time work together as a, as a unit. As a unit was, yeah. So it was like the, the plan would be quite clear from earlier the week, like you might go on 40, 45 minutes uh, and you'll know that by the Thursday already. So, um, I think it was a bit of a, just a jump. Like, I don't think uh, Gerard has scrummed that often with Bungi, yeah. which might have made a difference. And Wilco being there for the first time yes. in yeah. three years, back in the box group. I think he, he played exceptionally well. I think he was dominating his carries. Mm. But I think that, that scrumming thing is sometimes just takes a bit of time yeah. to get used to your, your partner in the front row. And I, and I suppose, Skog, that could be seen as a, as a positive after this game, knowing that, OK, we were disrupted in terms of that. One of our if not our biggest weapon. Yeah. Um, but still, we were able to, to get points due to that and get return on the penalties. And, you know, uh, I mean, that one time we got a penalty on our own uh, five-minute line. From there, we ended up getting a penalty in, in, their, in their half and yeah. kick a goal. Yeah, I think, like, obviously, you know, most of the scrums in the beginning was just going down. Mm -hmm. You know, the first penalty they asked us to play away, well, should have been a penalty. Uh, Stuart's arms down. Um, so, but yeah, I, I guess so many times the line, uh, the scrum bails us out, and like things that we're normally good at, like our lineup, mall stopping, you know, wasn't quite there. But still, I mean, the big moments come, and we, I think, Marnie was exceptional. But the fact that we were in five three, Rassi sort of expected, okay, we need it. It gets tight. Let's bring Henry on. Henry, Henry comes on. 
Doesn't only sl slot the penalty that bounces on the crossbar and yeah. goes off. I mean, and then slots the, the try, Cheslin's try, which is from the touch. And yeah. all of a sudden, we're two scores ahead and they're chasing the up. game. So, you know, a lot of stuff, I, I think we're just a step ahead in closing games out. And yes, there's some, you, there's fortune to that. You know, Andre kicks it, hits the crossbar, drops down the other side. You know, they've got to, I think their tails are up and yeah. in trouble. Um, but yeah, it's because we've gone 7-1 split and then we go, okay, this is a game that we, I think the bench goes the other way around. Yeah. And even when, um, I think you mentioned it, John, on the weekend, when Henry came on, the plan it looked like Damon's going to go off. Yeah. Which meaning, okay, keep Barney and Henry on. And then he said, no, Damon, you stay. So they changed it up, which yeah. meant Lucania had to come on a bit later. later. But like that's that's the fluidity we've got. With, and and Damien... Bench. Damien creates that try. And Damien yeah. creates a try. Uh, and out of nothing. nothing. Yeah, so you know, two of the best defenders. So Ben, exactly. ben, ben all Slade, and he, he puts it down, and he's got some monitored mongrel in him. <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes, flicks it off the left, and then, geez, like, I mean, it's Cheslin Colby, you know, that little step he's so got. Let's talk about those guys. Level. I mean, Damien, Damien won, you know, that <laughs> break, he's done it a couple of times now. But the. The fleet-footedness of a Cheslin, a Grant, because both those opportunities, yes, mm. clean line breaks, but it's not just a straight run in. No. You know, Cheslin still had to beat Slight Home. Um, Grant still had to beat um, Freddie Stewart. Freddie, yeah. I mean, is, uh, even, is that... Even, even <coughs> Chesley's, the cross kick. Oh, yeah. Beat. Also had to beat Freddie Stewart. <laughs> Where if, if Freddie Stewart's <laughs> going nine out of ten times, that's man and ball's smoke him. Yeah. But Cheslin steps before he catches the ball. He, the he ball. moves that much and then catches it. I mean, and you're basically making an air tackle. Because mm. that's, not, that's not a coaching thing. Mm. That's just pure raw talent, right? Beach touches. Be <laughs> Beach <laughs> touches. There we go, yeah. 100%. So is that, is that just a sign of where we are at um, in terms of our cycle of players that we have? That, yes, we've got, we've got a great coaching group. We've got, we've got great um, plans uh, and, and, and systems in place. But also the, the individuals that we have is just next level. I agree 100%. I think uh, plans, strategy, all those things are nailed out quite early. But I think it's those individual guys that bring that X factor. That you add, yeah. You just add on top of that. So it becomes quite difficult because we could have, from where we sat and watched at Twickenham, we saw Chesham being wide open. So we like almost preempted the cross kicks coming, if you know Marnie quite well. Yeah. And as he kicked it, like Stuart was so out of place, like when he caught it, poof, gone inside under yeah. the post. So. Like it was and I think it's the balance between that, obviously, you know, giving players that freedom to go finish. So Grant, you know, he wanted to be a running threat, even mm. though the ball yeah. popped out. It's not stand still, find your forward, is actually I'm going to the line, which I think is encouraged, yeah. especially about Tony Brown. But then it's, you know, the detail that goes into dragging the, the ruck over, getting on Port, Port Fleet's foot, yeah. but also your flanker trying to get to 10, and you get a double charge down, uh, I think it's all of that put together, you know. Portfeet got charged two, three times in, in mm. the first 20, and then you know, okay, it's it's a tricky after, it's uncomfortable for him. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think it's all of that that, that, that makes it so hard to play yeah. against. And that has a massive knock-on effect in the game as well. Like, mm. his kicks will go higher, yeah. more flat, that you can't put those perfect box mm. kicks in because Edmund's on his foot, Yeah, he feels that consistent pressure. And yeah, you look up, he's there every single time. Mm. So we talk about we, we talk about the special players we have. We, we've just heard that Eben, Peter Steff and Chesen have been nominated for the World Rugby Player of the Year. Um, one of the three of us have won that before. It's not you or me. <laughs> um, if, you, <laughs> uh, if, if you had to give it to one of them. So Kaylin Doris, the other, the other one nominated. Yeah. Yeah, I won't give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Bill um, Beaumont, Matt. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah you, you never know. Um, Jeez, so Who are you all, giving it to? They're all so exceptional, but I almost, you know, I'm almost leaning towards Cheslin. Yeah, self. I think he's just um, had an exceptional yeah, I mean, season. It's, it's bloody hard. I mean, you get nominated and you don't want to pick between. It's almost better if there was only one. So yeah, and then you go with him. You go with him. But it, like, yeah. I think I think we've been the exceptional side in the world this year. And, you know, obviously we still got to play Wales, but, you know, I'm comfortable that we're going to, you know, pitch it up and finish the year strong. <coughs> um, and then I think Cheslin's probably going to be the one. Although, you know, any one of the three get it, like I'll be the biggest supporter of that. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm, I'm almost saying I want it to be a race between Cheslin and Eben. 
purely because Peter Steff has won it before. <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay? So I want yeah. another South African uh, on there. So sorry, Peter Steff, <laughs> yeah. uh, even though he's been well deserved. Yeah. phenomenal. Okay, yeah. phenomenal rugby player. Um, and this year he has been amazing. So you, Cheslin with his ability to score tries and just the player that he is. And also Eben, you know, reaching that milestone of most cap for South Africa. And his consistency is also just next level. So let's yeah, hope. And then we got, we got Sasha nominated as young player of the... Yeah, break, break, breakthrough, breakthrough player of the break, year. Breakthrough yeah. player. He's Who's the other two in that? Uh, Wallace Titi. Oh, geez. Um, no, and Faye Wobosa, uh, isn't it? Faye Wobosa and... Um, Osborne from Ireland. Oh, okay. So that, it's, uh, that's a that's tough, tough group. Uh, that's a tough group. Geez, I mean, I love everything that Shasa has done this year so far, but I mean, Wallace, with Wallace, Atiti. Wallace Atiti yeah. for me has <laughs> yeah. been immense. Been yeah. Yeah, I mean, coming to South Africa, getting your first start, I mean, I only recently found out, like I played with these old men, which yeah. probably sums it up. But, Semo. Yeah, Semo, but um, no, Shati, has been incredible. Um, in, talking about incredible, I won't say that England's been incredible, but tacti tactically they were sound. Okay? They, they were really good in, in their approach to the game. They were good in the way that they started the game. Um, Marcus Smith, I, I thought, superb game again in yeah. terms of the changes to the team. Van Poerfleet struggled a bit with those box kicks, with the pressure that Evan mm -hmm. put on him. Um, but Freddie Stewart, same thing, you know, he, he, he certainly justified his selection. England's inability to score points in the last 20. What do you put that down to? And the, the, the inability to finish off games. Yes, I always want to say like the cliche fitness thing. Like, you reckon? Yeah, because like if you watch the box over the last, like that immense pressure they built from, like that slow poison, sorry, like just put it like yeah. out there, like teams just struggle to like towards the back end of the second half, especially when the five forwards come on yeah. the same time. Somehow they just can't manage to find space anymore. The, Breakdown becomes slower. You get big poaching pressure from Malcolm and Quacha and those oaks. Yeah. So I, I think sometimes teams just run out of a bit of gas towards the end of it. And is it is it also a combination of, of of that? You know, because they have to go more of their guys needs to go deeper because they don't have the the depth yeah. on the bench that that we have. You know, I, I don't think George Ford was was used this weekend. No. You know, so you're, you're sitting with a guy, you, you, you can use him, it's within the laws of the game, and even <laughs> yeah. though there are yeah. plenty of opinions on that, um, you can use him, but you don't use him, so you, you miss out. Yeah, I almost think that, yeah, I mean, like we obviously got, we back our bench to the yeah. hilt, unless you go 7-1, you've got to keep Grant back for the last 10 minutes. If, if it's like this weekend, you, you've got to go finish the game. Yeah. And for me, like, I think they still created enough opportunities in every single game. You think of the New Zealand game, first one of the Autumn Nations Cup. Ford hits the upright to win the mm -hmm. test match. Then he misses the drop goal post that. So, you know, it's almost like the bigger moments is running away from him at the moment. And like, we've all been in teams where you've had seasons like this. And it's almost like, you know, it becomes a bit of, it's a massive cliche, but it becomes a bit of a habit of losing these and throwing these ones away. And it's not one way of doing it. The one, the one game you'll put George Ford on and he'll make two uncharacteristic mistakes. Yeah. The other game you move Marcus Smith to fullback and he gets found out in the backfield. Um, so, I mean, the, the team selection and, and tactics this weekend against us was good trying to find a lot of space, doing the kick on kick. Uh, Freddie Stewart, you know, even though we probably want to find Smith or slide him in the back, he dominated the aerial yeah. contest and he just catches it like a cricket ball, like I a first cup it. up. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, to be honest, if you look at the bench, they can't really compete with our bench that we had on the weekend. And I think ultimately most teams come up against us and fall short in that regard. The two disallowed tries, what do you make of that? Maro, um, Nick Roll, Nick Roll, and the forward, fussy forward, forward pass. pass. I mean, have you seen the replays? I've seen, saw it on the big screen. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think ugh, both in the spirit of the game, probably unlucky. I think because uh, that was an unbelievable set piece play from the box. Yeah, anyway, how they how they found space on the outside there yeah. that quickly. Yeah. Um, but I think like uh, Maro's one is probably. Constant pressure at the breakdown. I had to come up with a solution. How to mm. get Malcolm out of there, and, mm. and I mean, it could. Yeah, and, like and Malcolm questions. didn't give up the fight. So just yeah. won the shoulder battle, and then you had to. I mean, it's. I mean, we see it week in, week out. That one, the neck roll, and it gets penalised and gets picked up all the time. And then you know, like if you cast him on back, like Scott Cummings 
Necrol mm. slash red card was nothing compared to that for Necrol. I mean, you, you know, so I guess that one gets called back. I mean, uh, this lot try for me is always a bit of a downer, especially yeah. it opens up the game. But then uh, our set play was magnificent. And I think you ask Fussy, he thinks, nah, he's just made a good pass. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, you don't know, the referees are what to try, then you've got to find conclusive evidence. So for them, if it was a forward pass, I think it was so, so marginal. I think, you know, we'll ask, we'll play that around here and we'll go 50 50 on yeah. whether it was or not. Um, we're two from two on tour. But it, it, it's as if we're still kind of in third, fourth gear. Um, we, we're not full tilt yet. What, what do you put that down to? And how do we rectify that going into the Wales game? I think Scala made a, a very good point when it came to the breakdown. It felt like watching from the side as well. It like, almost felt like Grant was digging for the ball a couple of times. It wasn't like that clean mm. on a platter, just play, play uh, Tony yeah. Brown's face as all set PC one, so it almost felt like that was a bit of a hiccup the whole time and I think that puts your back line and your force as carrying and passing under pressure so every time Grant has to go dig for it or the nine has to go dig for it, now all of a sudden that rush defence comes in play. Um, so hopefully if they can sort that out and they can sort out the, the line out accuracy, I think it uh, it might go into yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think it's a combination of stuff. The fact that, you know, we know that we attack best off line outs, that's one of our major strengths. Our line outs have been misfiring. So to the breakdown has been a bit slow. Then we give up on the gain line. We might have to kick a bit earlier than we are accustomed to in the set. Uh, you've got to sort of, you know, your nine gets trapped. Um, you concede penalties at the breakdown. All of that takes away from momentum. And then you've got to you get into an arm wrestle with a team that you actually want to be, you know, asking serious questions about. Um, every time you, you know, there's, a, there's a collision or contest, which you obviously just get taken away from you. On the weekend, you know, obviously our mall was a problem for us. England played well by kicking and trying to find space mm. early on. So, you know, when the ball's behind you, it becomes tricky. And, you know, Kitsi was there. You know, 90,000 people at Twickenham, they get off to a good start. You've got to, uh, you've you got to, it. you've got to right. fight back and quieten them down. And that doesn't happen by one or two phases. That hap that takes 80 minutes to break them down. And <clears> this box side, credit to them, had enough metal to do it. Um, Kitsi, have you been disappointed by the... Uh, What's the right word? Lack, maybe not lack of, of influence of the bomb squad. Um, you know, not 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 being as as effective uh, effective as previously. Off air, you said it's because you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it's. I mean, it, it's such a thing that I think the rugby viewers in South Africa has got used to. Like, it's yeah. you always expect this massive change in energy and momentum, but. Yeah. I think teams are actually like trying to prep for it now. Like it's, they they know like Rusty is going to pull the trigger any minute now to put five or six fresh forwards on the pitch. So I think what the Oaks are still doing quite well is they're doing their job extremely well and they're actually bringing a lot of like those the the shit people don't really see like that off the ball effort and putting real pressure yeah. at the breakdown, work rate, chase lines. Um, but you don't see that big line breaks that often anymore. The impact is different. The impact's yeah. much different. How, I mean, you were there when the bomb squad uh, was born. How did that come about? Is there, is there like a story to it or how, how did, where did bomb squad <laughs> happen I think it was for the first time? Probably 2019 World Cup. I think it was that, uh, the big one where I remember like we actually like started celebrating as a mini unit was that the Italy test match. Yes. Okay. Um, a big game. Yeah, <laughs> great, big game. It was a must win for us because we got our yeah. noses bumped hard against All Blacks. The All Blacks, yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, I think there we like had a little mini celebration and started calling ourselves the Bomb Squad and that's pretty much where it originated from. Who came up with the name? Uh, Franco Mostert. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> yeah. But then you started a beer called the Bomb Squad. Yeah. Is he not claiming naming rights there? <laughs> I don't want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's getting paid in product. <laughs> um, who impressed you in the England front row? Uh, no, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, probably as a tight head steward. Like, yeah. I think he's. I thought he's done well. Yeah, I think he's. Uh, the more he started starting for the. For, for England, he's yeah. been doing better and better. Um, I remember playing against him in Bath when I was at with, uh, with Ulster. He really impressed me as a tight head. I think he's quite strong. 
quite mobile. I think Gensch wasn't on his game. Yeah. I think he was a bit slow. Uh, missed a couple of tackles. Got pinned in the scrum for for collapsing a couple of times. But yeah, I think Stewart did. He was probably my standout front row for them. Who's the toughest player you've ever scrummed against? Frans Malerbe. Got my ass handed to me at uh, Greenpoint with the HL State. Yeah, <laughs> I, oh, when you were I playing actually, for Ulster. I, yeah. I actually remember I was on the commentary that, <laughs> yeah. that evening and everyone was looking forward to the contest. <clears throat> um, Kitsi, did you manage to watch the Argentina Ireland game? Not. Okay, I'm going to go to the next question there. No, <laughs> 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 Skog. Do you, so, do you think Argentina should have won that one? I think they left themselves too much to do in that second half. But um, this Argentinian side, when they get um, a, a bit of a tailwind behind them and they start running it, and they, the line breaks and the tempo they play, they can put any team to the sword. And I think Ireland was exceptionally lucky to get away with a victory in the end even though that Argentinian side, I think, will be disappointed by the way they started that game. Um, I mean, eight, what did they put up, 14 or 13 phases? You know, Ireland's got that ability to get away with stuff at the breakdown, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a late counter ruck or just swimming past and just delaying or lying in that, that you know, passageway, pathway to the breakdown where you as a cleaner get bumped and the nine's got to jump over someone and it gives them one ruck to set their defence and they come back at you. So um, I think, you know, Ireland probably deserved winners. I think they are going through a bit of a transition, John, oh, no. um, regarding, you know, players. And, you know, if you think at Lewis Ford, blindside flanker, Omahani, I think it's it's on its way out. And obviously Sexton moved away. Who is who is 10? You know, Crawley Frawley or Pendergast is probably the guy, you know, we, we, which we look at and think, geez, he's got a silky skill set. Um, but then you, you've got players like Gibson Park and James Lowe. Obviously, we played Super Rugby against them, but they play for Ireland now. They're exceptional at what they do. So, too, Caelan Doris, who's nominated as World Player of the Year. Mm. The, um, uh, when Ireland gets on a roll, though, like they did in that mm. first half, well, well, the start of the game, yeah. scoring the two tries so, so quickly after the, after the yellow card, that, that's just when they're at their, 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 their absolute best. Um, when they get phase break, yes. quick rucks, uh, Jameson Gibson Park really making really good decisions. But, uh, and then I thought, okay, this is going to be, you know, it's the kind of island of old. Yeah. But then in the second half, again, handling errors, passing the ball into touch, uh, you know, so they, it, it's, it, that is that pressure? They, is that pressure or is it, is it just the rustiness? I, what what, I what can you put almost, that down to? <clears throat> in that regard, they're almost like the, the All Blacks, when they're fresh in the first half, their skill execution is on another level, but somehow they, they, it can't stay there. It comes down as the game cracks on. And, and I think with Ireland, we've seen that a few few times now, where in the first half, on their terms, speed of ball, this linked up play, their the skill set accuracy is unbelievable, but then it drops off. And then, you know, then they start making errors and they, they don't have a different way of playing. They keep on playing the passes. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and they make errors, and they've been uncharacteristic in the amount of errors they've made over uh, the last three three weeks. But if you think I about like um, <coughs> the Springbok, like give some credit to Argentina as well. Like if you think back at the Springbok oh, yeah. test, yeah. like even the box had the flying start. Uh, mm. Oh yeah, and they came back. And they came back, and they somehow grinded the way out. And like me watching the extended highlights of the of the game, like it's it's almost that feeling where Argentina just doesn't give up. No, they yeah. don't. They don't give up. That's, yeah, a, that's a very good point because I mean they were down and out against uh, what was it 20 21 points down almost yeah 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 in in Argentina and then won that game and like they did that against us with a failing scrum they yeah. somehow got around um, obviously on their ball they can you know chuck it in you know by the eighth man's feet now and get away with it but on our ball they somehow survived you know the Bok onslaught I think for uh, not having furlong there in the Irish scrum is a big big issue for them I don't think they quite have and then obviously Tom O'Toole knocked himself out mm. Uh, when he came on, uh, so I think they can't really. The, the big weakness for Argentina is is in their scrum. Um, <laughs> so I'm just I'm just yeah. telling Jeremy that I can't see what he's showing me because the screen went dead. Mm. Um, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're by yourself. Yeah. You're by yourself. Okay. okay. I hope you got that one. You're yeah. flying uh, solo. <laughs> uh, Kitsy, you you spent time in Ireland at, Ulst mm. at Ulster. Um, any any good stories to share there? Any weird initiation or anything like that? 
<laughs> no, not really. I think it was probably a similar story to yours when you went overseas, like, first night out. <laughs> Man of the match performance. <laughs> Dang my body weight in Guinness, but uh, no, it was, uh, it was a fun time. Like, the weather was so shit. Like, it was raining 99% of the yeah. time, but otherwise it was good. It was very good. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, playing rugby in the Northern Hemisphere, that's what it will give you. Yeah. I don't mind the games. No, I don't mind. They're pitching yeah. there on a Monday in January. It's snowy. Yeah, and, and I mean, what I don't get is you get some of those players, like the Irish players or English players, that refuse to wear undergarments. Yeah. They're basically in their shorts and, in, and mm. they are blue. It's normally single digit on the back. Uh, yeah, uh, one, one, well. one, two or three. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a four <laughs> hard no, I was permanently in my head long. I mean, I took 45 minutes to get dressed. I had the full belly clava gloves. Yeah. I had every gadget you can find, hand warmers. And I was in a, in a changing room full of South Africans and all of us dressed exactly the yeah. same. I, I remember when I was at Munster, we played Ulster uh, in Belfast on the 2nd of January, I think it was. And BJ Boerta was still at yeah. Ulster then, rocked up there at the stadium, and it was literally like this. Okay? I, I think it was as hard Frozen as it. Solid, I had yeah. like my Maltese on and you could like ski. <laughs> yeah. It was like, I was yeah, like that's playing incredible. on tar. Um, we're kind of witnessing the end of an era with, with, with Ireland, with, with the, those guys retiring, and, and you mentioned as well, Scott, the, the names. Um, we're seeing now with Farrell, and we saw the same with Eddie Jones, the inability to, to kind of introduce young players to that squad. Um, whereas Rassi on the other side, you know, we, mm. we had 50 players already that played for the box this year which is just incredible. Yeah, um, unreal. You know, what do you put that down to? I, I mean, obviously, Ireland only have four... Thinking of this weekend, we might have a few more coming in, boys. Yeah, coming yeah. in. This, well, there won't be maybe one one debutant in Cameron, Cameron Anacom. But besides, I don't think we have any uncapped players beside him on, in the squad, do we? No one went to um, cover for Ruan or Kia, eh? No, no one went Yeah, John Klein. Yeah, John Klein. John Klein. He, played he well. just hasn't played for, for, for a while. Since the World for a while. Cup. What do you what do you put it down to for, from a from an Ireland and England point of view not not being able to do that? I think probably from a, from a Ireland point of view, I think they've got a probably a core group of thirty players they're trying to back the whole time. But in saying that, if you look at like Leinster rugby, like how they're actually bleeding a lot of young yeah. guys, and they're actually still doing extremely well. So maybe that's like a in the next two years you'll yeah. see a lot of those Oaks starting to feature more for Ireland uh, as a rebuild phase. But I almost feel like Farrell doesn't back the, the youngsters but it's, but it's also, Skalk, and you've made the point that, you know, so much of their talent pool is in Dublin yes. with, with Leinster. And when the internationals are gone, then those guys get, get gets exposure. Mm. But if they are second best, you almost want them to be playing in the big games when your internationals are, yeah. are back. And they're not doing that now. So it's, so is there a case for them to, to spread them more evenly so that... Like mix it up so they get yeah, some experience you know, playing yeah. with the big dogs. Because right? they're all contracted by the yeah, IRFU I, as well. I, I, so you've I got guess the you power also, to do it. You never know until a, a kid's played and he's played a season at top level. Yeah. So you can definitely stunt your development by only having one avenue and that's go through Dublin. Yeah. And what happens to the other franchises? We see Munsters battling so far in the URC this year, Ulster. You know, you cannot, you want youngsters to be playing where Exposed. they're from as well. Um, so, yeah, I think it, they run a, a, a danger, but I think they, they will notice this. They, you know, it's hard in um, an international test match window to have 50 players play in there. And that's what's so remarkable about Rossi, how many players he picks. It's almost that there's no fear of going a step backwards, losing a test match to go yeah. a step forwards or two steps forward. So, you know, if you think Six Nations is such a big thing there, you want to play your best team, then obviously, you know, they'll go travel. They came to South Africa, which is quite a hard place to pick new players. And now they've had a couple of big games end of the year. So somewhere you've got to make that stance and you've got to go, I think they've, you're far away, far enough away from 2027 20 World Cup to develop you know, a couple of talented players. And, and also, I suppose, in, um, in Ireland's defence, if, if you look post-World Cup, they had the Six Nations, mm. where you don't have an, an easy game, so no. that, that's always tough, so you can't really blood play. Especially because Italy was going well. Yeah. yeah, they were going well. Wales, you know, Wales were obviously... 
Yeah, but you, you don't, normally don't really have an opportunity. Then they came to South Africa two test matches. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to do it Do mm. it then. And then you have your end of in autumn yeah. nation series. You have New Zealand, Argentina. Yeah. Maybe this weekend we will see changes. And then you've got Australia. So yeah. it's not as if they they really had plenty of opportunities. And, to, and, to and whatever your, your mindset was about Australia and how they went in the rugby championship is starting to change a little bit after their last two weeks' performances. Will the... Um, the upcoming Six Nations, it seems like that will be one of a very closely contested one as well because France France, France going really well and they've been able to blood some new players. Um, it'll be interesting to see Scotland, Australia this weekend, mm. what, what happens there. Wales going through a bit of a slump, Italy as well, but then Ireland also one that will definitely be staking a claim. Jeez, I mean, you, you know, Wales, what they've got, they've got us coming up. And I don't know if they've got another game, probably. Uh, Wales, what, they must have two left, I think. No, I think it's... You go to Six Nations and you think, obviously, Italy hasn't looked... Six Nations have looked amazing, but then they haven't looked strong. Post that, yeah. Post that. They've obviously got a massive challenge this week and they're playing the All Blacks. And we all know what happened at the Rugby World Cup when the All Blacks pitched up and played against I think them. I can predict that result. Yeah, I think me too. Um, so, but uh, you're wondering where Wales' next victory is coming from. And then France, I think, you know, Talking about evolution of players, every time you see that team, there's five new names yeah. coming into it. But it's also just like the talent pool, like yeah. base huge, based in the top 14. Like it's, it's unreal. Like, so I, yeah, I, I, I would pick them as favourites for the six. Yeah, times. it has to be them. Has um, to be them. And then you, you wonder if England will be able grant, will both be granted another opportunity. I think you know, just on the way they're playing, I think there is merit in it, but. Again, you know, in South Africa, if you start losing seven test matches in a, in a calendar year, then all of a sudden, you know, the pressure, the pressure gets too big for us, yeah. Depression? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Depression? I know. Uh, how good was that France All Black game yeah, awesome. as a neutral to watch? Yeah, good. I mean, it was just, you know, the, the quality of the game, it actually reminded me of the World Cup. Mm. You know, two, two teams that were at the, and, and then, you, then I was thinking, okay, the South Africa France quarterfinal and the All Black Ireland quarterfinal. Yeah. The quality of those games, okay, in the quarterfinal. Yes. And that game reminded me of it. Yeah. And then I'm thinking like, Wales also played in the quarterfinal. Yeah. Wales quarterfinals mm. last year. Yeah, yeah. And look where they at now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, France spoiling the party for the All Blacks. One point win. Um, I actually called it. Um. And the only reason I called it was that you know, I, I thought it's going to be tight. And I don't know if New Zealand can get three tight games yeah. over the line in a row. Um, <coughs> but then there's so much quality in that French side. I, I do think Razor is starting to get the culture and identity yeah. of this All Black side, right? Obviously, younger players coming through. Camaroy got started. Cortez Ratima comes off the bench. Satiti. Um, Black guy. Yeah. Um, who replaced early on on the loose foot? Fina. Fina looked. Yeah. Um, they all look amazing. Um, but then you go, okay, Gregory Aldred, how good is he as a rugby yeah. player? Uh, Mo Varka, the hooker, yeah. is something out of this world. Ramos goes from 15 to 10 because Jalibert says, sorry, yeah. I don't sit on the bench. And, you know, Ramos looked amazing. The young fullback okay. who played in his Bur debut. Burdos. Bur 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 uh, Burdeau. And then, you yeah. know, when they start getting on that role, attacking, and they make it chaos, and DuPont's running around, they're kicking cross kicks, offloading it. A bloody awesome team to watch. But Kitsi, you spent two years at, at Bordeaux yeah. playing, playing in France. Uh, was Mathieu Jolibet there? Yeah. He was there. Was so there. did you hear the story on the weekend? So he was selected on the bench. And they said, nah, I don't play on the bench. <laughs> so, so, so he went back to Bordeaux, said yeah. no. He thinks he should be starting. Is, is he? <laughs> no, but he was still at Espoir like, later. He was like yeah. he was very young when I was. I, there. Um, oh, okay. I, I yeah. can quite comfortably say I've never quite been in that position. No. <laughs> yeah, I've never, never been able to say that. But how was how was your time uh, at Bordeaux? Is that the most competitive league in in the world? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, probably up until recently with the URC. I think the URC has got some great merit. If you think about like teams all over Europe. Um, like Glasgow Warriors becoming an incredible team. Like you can see, like how that translates into the uh, national team as well. They were strong that first half against the box as well. Yeah. Like we, I know we're talking about last week now, but um, 
Yeah, so the URC has become like a really important, tough competition, but I think the top 14 was some of the toughest rugby I've played. I mean, we, we experienced, well, I experienced Bordeaux for the first time at the World Cup yeah. last year, and what a place. Mm. John, mean, first, he first missed his flight. I did from... Out of there. So we were meant to do um, a little engagement, me and John, and obviously the engagement got cancelled because John was sitting at McDonald's, right? <laughs> I went to Guernsey, yeah. You were sitting at McDonald's, missed his flight. <laughs> no. That's yeah, you were sitting at McDonald's. <laughs> then, we, then we went for a steak dinner, so John arrived late, quite with um, arrival aggression. <laughs> and then also fines. Then we had fines, then we drank and ate steaks, lots of it. And then we had credit card roulette, which very aptly landed on John's number just after Matthew Pierce had a full-blown panic attack for playing credit, <laughs> ro credit <laughs> roulette. He got up and left. He was he gone. Left. We lost him as, friend, if, as a friend. Yeah. He's out. You'll, you'll really get along with Ben Youngs because both of you have the ability to just change a story totally. <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh, Adam Ashley Cooper was over there. With, yes. Was he a bad influence? Uh, a little bit, but uh, he's a great guy. It was also like he was there with a lot of experience and yeah. a little bit of naughtiness from Australian mindset. Mm. But uh, good fun. Um, ended up in the pub quite often with him. But just nice. You, know, you, you do. It, it, it's weird. Um, with my two stints as well, you, you go to a, to a club and, and then the, the Southern Hemisphere guys, you know, you, you kind of link with the New Zealanders yeah. yeah. and the Aussies. We've got the same habits too, yeah. Yeah. Um, post-training. We all want to do a similar type of thing, you know. But it's... Uh, Old beer. Old beer. <laughs> yeah, it is the amazing thing about rugby. It, it brings you together. I mean, the friends I still have in Ireland, England, well... Ben Youngs is not a friend anymore. <laughs> uh, but Are you welcome in the Midlands <laughs> or is it gone? Eh? I, lo I loved my time over there. Okay. It was a good time. Um, now, talking about the roommates and teammates. Now, we've had some very good roommates. Um, I also had some bad roommates, <laughs> like Skulk. There's a story going around that your roommate, meaning your permanent roommate, your wife, um, she had some bad habits coming back from nights out when before a test match for you. Yeah, 2019 World Cup. Yeah. Yeah, so she, she truly believed this is the way we're going to win the World Cup. It's like they win it on a Friday night. On a, the yeah, night no, before. I, I've got time for that. I've done it before when I've been in the non-playing squad. No, yeah. big time. So, I, so the first time it happened, so I just said, like, listen, yeah, go out, enjoy your evening, but please don't come in like a bull in a china shop and just trying to wake me up and mm. opposite happens. Comes in, <laughs> switch on all the lights, yeah. comes and wakes me up, wants to tell me a story about the night the out. Night out. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fair play. Next, uh, next Saturday, so that was the quarter final against uh, Japan. Yeah. The semi-final against Wales. I like listening, I said, go out, enjoy your night. But all your pajamas, makeup wipes, everything yeah. in the bathroom. Ready. <laughs> yeah, just come in quiet, right. quiet. And actually, like, Semi woke up when she came in, but she was, like, like scurrying around in the room, trying to find her stuff, and then, yeah, went on, went on next morning, fine. So the, same the, same final. Like, did Amy win the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> big, played a big yeah, part in it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the girls do play, the, the wags do play a big part in, mm. in us being able to perform, right? Um, but still, we won that Semi. You, you got a Semi? I got a semi and I won the semi. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Now, where's Kitsi. The, where's the yes. setting, John? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> we, um, we are going to play a game. Okay. Do you like games? Yes. This game is called Ya ja or Nia. Yeah. Ja or Nia. Okay. It's quite simple. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a statement. Can we, can we do Bucky's and go Ya ja, Nia? <laughs> ja, ja, no, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that is not an option. Okay. It's Ya ja or Nia. Okay, mm -hmm. you ready for it? Yes. Yeah. It's a good. See, you got it. It's just like that. Well done. Did Skulk Brits accidentally drug the team with sleeping pills after the 2019 World Cup final? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not accidentally. Oh, really? That's not good. <laughs> he just wanted a fun time out of the boys. <laughs> Cheapest, okay. <laughs> I played golf with him the other day. We overshot the mark on the golf course, taking some snus and brandy and. I had, to, I had to help. Luckily, I mean, he's he's quite a tiny little midget. I had to carry him around there as a mascot. <laughs> but he was a mascot. He's a good shape now. But he was a mascot in 2019 too, wasn't he? Um, the yeah, 
Uh, I mean, because it's tough flying back from Japan, other side of the world, different time zone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And now you <laughs> use the sleeping tablet. But I've, on that flight, I wasn't part of it. Me and RG flew the other side of the world. Ah. So we had a 12-hour uh. layover in Hong Kong. And that was pretty impressive as well. Oi, 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 oi. I've, had one, I've, had, I've had one of those with Shimmy. It was a, it was a hell of an experience. Yeah. Shimmy. Is it like you walk into the lounge and you're like, you don't know where to start. So you just go top left and you just work your way through the alcohol cabinet. <laughs> For 12 hours. 12 hours. Does Fuff have more hair products than any lady you've ever met? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Skull, you must uh, play along. It's yarn here for everyone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the back of Kitty, I'm just backing, backing <laughs> my big friend here. Why are you showing us your hair? I thought you were going to chew me about my hair. <laughs> Basically saying I've got no hair product, boy. You yeah. don't. I've got, uh, you know, it's bar soap. Body soap. It's, it's bar soap or body wash. <laughs> Straight through. Show us again. How's it looking, boys? No, it's looking good. Thank you. Will Evan Roos's voice ever break? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, does Rashi like to dance with the lads in Budgie Smugglers after a big win? Yeah. That's got to be no. That would no. be weird. Disturbing. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause the yarn here for a moment. We ask all the guys that have been coached by Rassi. Give us some... Is, are, are there any good stories about Rassi on tour that you can share? Probably not that I can share. <laughs> But also 2019, <laughs> uh, probably one of the most awkward situations I've ever been in was at a like a midweek safe up. And so it was myself, Malcolm, Damien, the Allen, the Razzi all sitting in a like in a team room, just yeah. having a couple of beers. And Dugs and Razzi got into an argument. And he <laughs> told Charles, this year, boogie stick at home. It's not playing <laughs> 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 we do have to come back the next day. It's like, Rassi, I'm so sorry. What yeah. happened last night? No worries. You obviously missed this flight back then, eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> flight good, good, good flight to miss. Good flight to miss. Was that before the semi final? No, that was like early in the World Cup. Yeah, I see. He won the semi final. <laughs> yeah. um, is Eben Ed, we're back to Yonia. Okay, yeah. thank you. Is Eben Edsabed the most terrifying man in rugby? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What about Adam? Have you seen his eyes? <laughs> If you can't punch out some rugby field, maybe in the no, pub. No, you can't. No, you can just grab. Grab. He's good. I mean, he's going to grab me. <laughs> and shake, shake around me around like a rag doll. I, 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 I don't think I'll piss him off. No, me neither. Is Paul Ruiz the greatest school in the world? <laughs> what a question. Is this Freddie again? It's Freddie. You can answer that one. Uh, and I'll answer the opposite. You is up? Steve Borthwick too boring a manager for England? Jeepers, Freddie. Jeepers. Where did these questions come from? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm just going to say, no. near. 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 Um, do you love... Okay, there's a different name in here. Do you love Bomb Squad beer more than anyone in professional rugby? So, love it more than anyone else yeah. near? Malcolm, Malcolm loves Knox. it more. Nice. No, I love Malcolm more than I love beer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that what you say? No, the, the question actually is, <laughs> do you love beer more than anyone else loves beer? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Finally, are beers, scrums, and your wife your favorite things in the world? You can add golf to it as well. Golf. But you're not very good at it. I'm not very good, but I love it. Okay. I feel the same about my golf. <laughs> John, talk, I mean, I think it's a good time. You're ambassador for Golf Simulator Studio. Mm. Uh, haven't uh, been there why, for, uh, for a year now. Why, why haven't I seen any improvement in your golf, my man? I don't know. <laughs> it's a lack of talent, Skulk. He's my partner as well. We played together not too long ago. Spa Golf Day. Actually you won. Played, played against him. I actually played against him. He beat me. Oh, yes! <laughs> I played with Lewitt. Did I play with Lewitt? Yeah, you played with Lewitt. Yeah, we won. Um, <coughs> we what was the handicaps? Like 25, 22? No, no, there's, there's not so many. There's a lot of shots, actually, from Lewitt's side specifically. Was yeah. it? And John's gone out a bit. Yeah, I'm, I played off a 60. Yeah, John's got the uh, double cross happening. Uh, aim left, oh, okay. hit left. Aim left, hit left. What are you playing off now? Could see? Like a 12. Nice. 
What does it feel like to play like with a 12 on your back and not a one? <laughs> I never know. <laughs> have you turned into Freddy? No. no. Okay, guys. Any, can see, are there any other stories you can share with us <laughs> that the world, <laughs> the webosphere out there <laughs> will really enjoy? Uh, probably in Nandas PG-13. Okay. We're going we're gonna to go play some golf before the end of the year. How long will you be out of action not to play golf after your operation? Probably in end of Jan, February I'll be back. Oh, that's long. Okay, so we'll do it in February. Mm. We'll do it in Feb. We've got we to gotta get you when you're still off your game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can play beginning Maybe of next Jan. next week. <laughs> 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 you play on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool, guys, that's all we've got time for. Um, a Bok win. Um, one more left against Wales. I can't see us struggling too much against Wales. Do you see us struggling? Will we still see no. Warren Gatlin by the end of the week or post the weekend? Um, I, I don't know if they can move away from him. I'm, I'm not too sure if yeah, but Wales can separate with Warren Gatlin. You know, they uh, haven't won for a test for 400 and something days. Um, it's, it's going tough there. You can't see them going any better against the box this weekend. Although, my biggest thing is, who can get close to naming the team that Rossi's going to pick this weekend? Because no we, we are nowhere near picking the right side. No chance. Are we winning that one? <laughs> We're winning that one? Yeah, yeah, big time. Winning it. I'd it say at least 25 point spread, if not more. Yeah, I, th I think if we get it right, they're in trouble this weekend. Could see, are we winning that one on the weekend? Yeah. Against Wales, unbeaten? Yeah, I think we go unbeaten. It will be a phenomenal year for Springbok Rugby if we can win that one. Post World Cup, being double World Cup champions and then going through this year. Obviously the loss against Ireland, unfortunately, the loss against Argentina, mm -hmm. but a really strong year. Kitsi, uh, from me personally and the rest of the box office squad, good luck with your operation. Thank you very much. Hope that goes well. Scala, thanks for joining again. Thank you, partner. Good luck, Kitsi. We'll touch Thanks, base later in the week. And yeah. then uh, John wants to play golf against you in January, but I'll take you on in Feb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's sadly all we've got time for, guys. Stephen Kitsoff, absolute legend, double World Cup winner. We met him when he was an 18-year-old. He literally said four words a year <laughs> in that Stormers environment, but just they grow up so quickly. Um, phenomenal rugby player. Kitsi, thank you much for joining us. Another win for the box against England. They take on Wales this week and let's hope for a big win. Because for now, the box office, before I close it, Shimmy's back next week. Box office is closed now. Cheers.